Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is number 38 and I'm going to derive the Gibbs factor. So the previous video to this is where I derived the Boltzmann factor and it's actually video number 15. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com as well where I've got all my videos archived and listed. So to be honest the argument here is the exact same as with the, uh, with the Boltzmann factor. So if you understand that you're going to understand this. So if you, know, if you don't understand what I'm doing you can always go back to this video here. But the argument is the same. So we're trying to, I suppose, analyze the probability of an en a particle having an energy when the particle is inside a reservoir. So what we do is we look at the ratio of two different probabil probabilities, or the ratio of the probability of two different energies, we'll say. And from that, we're able to get the Gibbs factor. <coughs> so some notation. The multiplicity of the reservoir to when the, we'll say your particle is in state S1, we're going to call it, that's the multiplicity, sorry, that's the multiplicity, that's the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1. Similarly, this is the multiplicity of the reservoir when the, when the atom is in state S2. So even now, we're just looking at one atom inside a reservoir of other atoms, we'll say. Okay? Now, what we want to do is look, we want to look at the atom and the reservoir, because an isolated system, in an isolated, an isolated system, all microstates are equally probable, or equally likely. And this, um, this system, we'll say, where we have the reservoir, reservoir plus the atom is isolated and therefore all microstates are equally likely. So what I want to do is look at the ratio of each of these probabilities. Alright, so what do we get? <coughs> so let's look at the probability of the the, the probability of the uh, of state S2 divided by the probability of the state S1. That's going to be the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2 divided by the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1. But we know that the multiplicity is equal to e to the entropy over k, because S, of course, is k log multiplicity. All right? Now, where do we go from here? If we just plug in, plug in this formula in, we're going to get the ratio of the probabilities for the state S2 and the ratio of the probability state S1 is going to be equal to e to the the ent entropy of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2 and there's also a factor of K and we have E to the entropy of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1 and there's also a factor of K and we can just, I suppose, rewrite this as E to the entropy of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2 minus the entropy of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1 and we have this factor of Boltzmann's constant. All right, where do we go from here? So the next thing we're going to do is note that a change in entropy delta S, when it's, when, we'll say, when delta S is small, it's, we call it DS, okay? But we need to look at the thermodynamic identity. Thermodynamic identity says this, a small, the infinitesimal change in internal energy is TDS minus PDV plus mu dn, where mu is the chemical potential, and the chemical potential is the energy added to your system when you add a single particle. Now, in the Boltzmann factor, we got rid of this term, but now we're going to say that the system can change particle, the number of particles, but this term here is negligible, so we get rid of it. So now what we say is that du is tds plus mu, d, mu dn. All right, so we need to plug that in. So ds, then, is going to be equal to du minus mu dn over t. Alright, so when you plug that in, our probabilities become the following. The probability of state 2 occurring divided by the probability of state 1 occurring, okay, is going to be equal to uh, 1, let's say e to the 1 over kt and du reservoir when the atom is in state S2, minus mu 
dn reservoir when the atom is in state s2 minus du reservoir when the atom is in state s1 plus uh, mu times dn reservoir when the atom is in state s1. Now actually, before I continue, there is something I want to say here. I'm after forgetting to say it at the start. Why is it that we can just look, why is why the probability of the atom being in state s2 divided by the probability of the atom being in state s1 proportional to these multiplicities? Well, the reason is this. We, well, we, we can imagine that it's going to be, why it's equal, excuse me. We know that it's definitely proportional. We know that the probability of the atom doing something is proportional to the number of states available in the reservoir. However, if we take the ratio of the probabilities, all the proportionality constants cancel and we're just left with these two uh, multiplicity factors. Okay, so just to move on. Okay, so we have this. Now, if we think about it, that the change of the number of particles in the reservoir is equal to minus the change of the number of particles in the atom, or the number of particles in the atom, I suppose, doesn't make sense. Sorry, there's a factor of minus there. Okay, and du reservoir is equal to minus du of the atom, like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, we know that the average energy is n times n times e bar. So what I'm going to do is actually use e from now on, okay, because we're talking about a single atom. So what we can say as a result is that the ratio of the probabilities is equal to the e 1 over kt and we're going to have the following. We're going to have minus de atom when the atom is in s2 plus mu dn atom when the atom is in state s2 plus de atom when the atom is in state s1 minus d or mu we'll say times dn atom when the atom is in state s1 okay so we can see we're, we're getting closer to what looks like the, uh, the probability so I'm going to rewrite this up above So we can re rewrite that, I suppose, as follows, by saying the probability of the atom being in state S2 divided by the probability of the atom being in state 1 is equal to e to the 1 over k kt minus 1 over kt, excuse me, because I'm going to rearrange it as follows. I'm going to rearrange it so we have de atom when the atom is in S2 minus mu dn atom when the atom is at s2 so basically taking the s states together we have minus de atom when it's in s1 minus or excuse me plus mu dn atom when it's in s1 okay and i had to take out this factor of a minus in order to write it this way okay i'm sure you can see what's coming next okay so that means because of our uh i suppose the properties of exponentials that we can rewrite this as follows e to the 1 minus 1 over kt and we can have de atom s2 minus mu dn atom when it's in s2 divided by e to the minus 1 over kt de atom in s1 minus mu dn atom in s1 so if you saw my video on the Boltzmann factor, we realized that each of these is now we call a Gibbs factor. So we said that the probability of state S occurring is equal to 1 over Z times e to the minus e, let's say, of S minus mu n of S divided by kt. For this time, instead of Z being the partition function, we call it the Gibbs sum or grand partition function, and it's the exact same thing, it's the sum of the Gibbs factors. Okay? So, this, the only difference here, I suppose, is that we're now accounting for the, for the movement of particles, rather than we didn't with, the, uh, with, with um, the Boltzmann factor. So, thanks for watching. Please pass to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com.